Hello, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey guys, Ian Hume here. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Come on, you foxes! Your first choice for everything Leicester City. Tune in and join in now. Right, Chris. All white there? All white at the back? Hey, hey, ho, ho, ho. It's Christmas. And I tell you what, we had a lovely Christmas present from Newcastle at the weekend. Somebody with a worse defence than us. And obviously, looking at it, a worse attack. I mean, 4 nil. I've got to give all credit to uh, John, who joined me on the show at, at 7 and did the Opposition View show. He took it well, and I didn't rub it in hmm, too much. Maybe just a little bit. This is Leicester Till I Die TV. We are on YouTube, all your social media sites, and, of course, all your podcasts if you prefer to listen. This is where you can find us. <laughs> Listen on your favourite podcast platform or ask your smart speaker to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. Subscribe, like, follow and join in now. Now, I know it's a prediction show tonight and we've got uh, Steve and Brad waiting in the wings to jump in. But we've just been having this conversation and I was on another Lester channel before I came uh, live on here, uh, just in the chat. Randers, yeah, exactly. Can you smell the Danish bacon already? Because I certainly can. Would you sooner, and let me know in the chat here, we could have had Barcelona. Would you, I mean, to be honest with you, forgetting yesterday's game, because, you know, we, we turned up for that one, don't know if that's a false dawn or whatever. But if we'd got Barcelona, I honestly believe their worst would have beaten our best as we are this season. Would you sooner have had two games against Barcelona in the um, Premier League, in the in the Europa League, or would you sooner be playing like Randers and the chances are that we could go through and probably even make it to the final and win the damn thing and be the inaugural winners? Let me know what your thoughts are in the chat. Randers or Barcelona? Talking to Barcelona, bring him in. <laughs> Steve, good evening. The, the Barcelona of our of our predictions. Well, maybe not. <laughs> good evening. Mate. Now, as, as, as a fan, uh, as oh, sorry, as an ex-player, you were saying before we came live there that uh, for you it would be um, Barcelona every day of the week. Yeah, I think uh, it's the right time to play Barcelona now. Um, you know, I was looking at the league. I said, were they right down in eighth, ninth, tenth place? Mm. 18 points behind the top. Uh, they're not scoring prolifically like they used to. And I think, you know, they, they're going through a bad patch. And I think, you know, it's, it'll be the, the ideal time to play it. But if we played them, and let's say somehow we beat them, we could get another... Champions League side that's that's come down and gone through in the next round. We could actually win the Conference League. To be fair, I wish they weren't in it because I think, you know, um, when everything's going great for Leicester and we're in the top four and everything's going well and we're cruising, it would have been nice to carry on in Europe. But I think now mm. because the situation in the league and the way the, you know, the players are supposed to be getting tired, things like that, I think this is, you know, Trivial games that they could do without. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Brad 
Uh, well, I know what Brad's opinion is. Let's see if he joins us from his lotus position on his bed. Brad, <laughs> you, you, you'd, you'd fancy the game in Barcelona personally more, wouldn't you? Yeah, I just look. I, I do see both sides of the arguments. I said that to you both backstage. I, I think on terms of potentially winning the competition, um, I'm feeling more confident in being able to win it. You would go for Rangers or Randers or however you say the name. I've butchered it already. I know I have. Um, but for the occasion, it's always going to be Barcelona. I don't care what state Barcelona are in. You know, you will always be able to say it, even if it's tongue and cheek, even if it's the worst bone Barcelona side ever. You'll always be able to say tongue and cheek if if it happens. We beat Barcelona. People people can say what they yeah, like. Huh? Exactly. Like, huh? well, yeah. We we won the Community Shield. It doesn't matter that Manchester City had half the youth team in the starting eleven. You know, and, yeah. <laughs> but yes. I, I just it's think. I, sorry, Steve. The thing you got to worry about is that if you're coming against these lower clubs that nobody's heard of and then you lose to them I think that's going to put more pressure on the team and the manager and I think that's yeah. that's the big yeah, that as well. so you the know, expectation goes up now of yeah. Leicester should really at least make the final yeah like you say if you play Barcelona you, used to, you lose to Barcelona then everybody holds their hands up and say fair play but you yeah. know you play, you play these teams that you've never even heard of and things like that and then you put in a bad performance and lose that just adds and adds and adds to the pressure yeah. I remember Blackburn years ago when they won the when the Premier League and they went out to some Norwegian team um, that nobody had ever heard of and yeah I was living up in the northwest at the time and that that kind of um, <laughs> went on for a while so uh, let's face it we we <laughs> as little we're buggered if we do we're buggered if we don't you know who'd, who'd be a football player eh, Brad yeah definitely <laughs> I love that. And again, it is it is a preference. That I'm sure people in the in the comments will be probably more lopsided towards Barcelona. I get the sense, but there would still be people that see it the way that you expressed it, Chris, which is more chance of. And it's at the end of the day, like I've always said about these European Cup competitions, and and even the Carabao Cup, which is, in my opinion, is going to be a dead cup if it's not already. In, it is probably already in the eyes of fans, but it's. He's probably going to end up leaving the game altogether, which is a bit of a sad feeling when you consider what it awards to teams, like these teams we've never heard of, that might be that only way into a higher European competition. We're very blessed and very spoiled as a nation that we're quite popular, but very popular globally, to have so many European representations. Indeed. Indeed. Right. Um, this is this is what we're doing tonight. <laughs> It's the Let's Until I Die Premier League Prediction Show with Chris, Brad and regular special guest, ex-Lester City player Steve Linex. Like and subscribe now. Your own jingle, Steve. You've made it. <laughs> life, can't, life can't get any better than this for you. Right. Um... Let's have a look. Steve, what happened last week? Absolute nightmare. I thought the teams that were going to do good for me, I, I, the Norwich one, I, I thought they were the better team. And um, I've had a couple of more results again go after 90 minutes. So, yeah. you know. I mean, I, I, I've put the red out there, as you can see, Brighton and Hove Tottenham, as we did with the Burnley Tottenham the other week. It's in red. So what, what I'm going to do with that, Rather than asking you to predict again when that comes up, I'll keep the original predictions. And when there's and when they play those games, I'll add the points on. If obviously whoever gets it, um, Brad, you 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 added blinder. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm half good at this. I, I mean, I'm not good at this, Chris. It's seven weird, right, seven right. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Did myself over on a on a few of them for the perfect ten, but uh, very good week. All things considered, some late goals saved me. So, what I stole from the poor and gave to the rich, I was an anti Robin Hood. I was the sheriff <laughs> in this case. In, actually, I mean, I, I know I mentioned this last week because with the Brighton and, and Tottenham game not being played, it's the first time that we've actually, between us, managed to get 
somebody get every result that right. So uh, we've we've done well, but we're gonna we're gonna rush into it because it's a, it's a double header this week because uh, we've got two lots of games. So uh, we've got a lot to get through. Starting tomorrow, uh, every game Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is on BT Sport. Um, so, um, Steve, Brentford, Manchester United. Yeah, I think uh, Man United is still going through the uh, the honeymoon period with him, and I don't see, I can't see much improvement to be honest. I thought they struggled again um, the weekend, so uh, I can't see Brentford beating them. But I'm going to go for a draw with this one. Draw. I'm I'm, I'm trying to think what I went for on. Um... On on the thing, I'm just gonna. I'm trying something new tonight, and I'm just seeing. Is that has that S come up? Can anybody see an F? Yeah, an S. Yeah. Oh, it has now. Yeah, I'm 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 actually filling it in on another computer so I can keep the screen up on this one. Um, Brad, you a Brentford fan? Yes, I am. I do like them, um, and although there's probably a few discrepancies with. Manchester United being a bit scrapey uh, in the last few weeks with their results, they are still turning on the corner. He's clearly having a very instant impact at, at Manchester United is Ralph. Um, few words that, um, you know, that he's been involved at all levels at the club, been very hands-on approach, uh, which seems to really suit Manchester United. They seem to really show a lot of belief behind a guy that's very passionate and shows that he's there for the club on a whole, not just to, you know, sign the sheets, put some put some magnets on and, and, and stand there and watch them train or something like that. He's very hands-on. So he's clearly benefited United. They clearly needed it. You know, Ollie's reign came falling down and was probably getting a bit sour in the end. And I think that they're going to continue the scrappy sort of nitty-gritty ability to get a result. And I think they're just going to edge this one. I think Manu are just going to edge it because Brentford's a very difficult ground to go to. They make that place very big yeah. for a small ground. They do a great job yeah. of it. as credit to the fans. But I think Manu will just edge it. Scott's going for the Brentford win. Um, I I have put you in there. I think it will come up in a minute, Brad. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting you. Man United, they have won the last three. Um, Arsenal, Palace, and 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 Norwich, but none of them were impressive. No, you know, they're all quite close, as you said. Brentford, they may be sort of they, they found their level now. I mean, they're at tenth, maybe you know, they finished that tenth to fifteenth sort of position. Maybe they are sort of going to win a couple, draw a couple. I can't see them getting anything from this. And unfortunately, as much as it pains me, I have to agree with you, Brad. And it does hurt. But I am, uh, I'm going to have to. But uh, now then, we've got, to, after having your favourite team, Brentford, we've got Steve's favourite team in Norwich, hosting Aston Villa, who um, the return to, 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 uh, to Liverpool wasn't very good for Mr Gerrard, was it, Steve? I thought second half they've done really well. I think uh, he showed them too too much respect first half. Um, you know, he's, he, they got a better result really than most of the clubs. That they weren't hammered. They weren't played off the pitch. I I, I didn't feel. Mm. So um, this one, you know, I think uh, Norwich are going to win this one because he, you know he's 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 desperate for a result against Aston Villa, and I'm sure that he's you know he's got everybody geared up for this one. And I don't think he bothers losing in the rest of one as long as he beats these on uh, tomorrow. Mm. And that is a very good point, Brad. Um, see, the thing is, I I agree with Steve. I don't think um, I don't think Steve and Gerard um, did too much wrong. I think they put a very sturdy performance. Mm. Lots of teams have been absolutely walloped by Liverpool this season. Uh, this season, and. It, it, it was probably, if you said to Stephen Gerrard, you're going to lose against Liverpool, but what's the worst case scenario you, you, you'd be happy with? 
he'd take a one nil defeat and seeing his team put in the effort they did, especially in that second half. And it was a penalty, wasn't it? It wasn't like yeah, you know. And of course, yeah, of course. I mean, it was penalty, uh, and you know, it's always harder when you lose a game to just one lack of concentration, one mm. lack in concentration that costs you uh, coming away from uh, from Anfield with a very good point. But Norwich now, this is Steve Smith's. T- this is uh, Dean Smith's turn, isn't it, to get his uh, moment because he's going back to his former team mm. with a new Premiership team, and he's given Norwich a real injection of um, purpose, a bit, a bit of belief. Um, not sure if it's too little, too late from Norwich. I think the damage may have already been done because um, that damage was, well, it was horrible to look at. It should have a rating on it. It was that horrible. Should not be suitable for children to look at. It was embarrassing watching Norwich in the first half of this bit of the season. But um, I think this is where he maybe gets a little bit of one on Villa, and I think they're going to come out with a very tasty draw. I think this is going to be a bit. I think there's going to be goals in this game. Certainly won't be the last on match today, but it's going to be spoils will be shared between both clubs. <sighs> I, I, I should actually, as I watched you on um, on Doug's show the other night, I should have made a note of what you said on there and see if you agree on this one. Because all I'll know is, and, and I'm, this is for the second time, I've got to, I've got to see, um, oh, excuse me, I've got to, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I might not, might not last to see the games. I've got to agree with you, Brad. I think, I think Dean Smith has, will have his team up for this one. And he obviously has wants to get one over on Villa. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if if they've got enough. Do you know what I mean? But I'm I'm going to go for the draw as well because I think I think they will they will get something out of this. He'll save a bit of face, and he will get something out of this. Um, Scott's. I think Scott's going because he's given me his predictions for the next ten games. Um, <laughs> then Manchester City leads United. Steve, surely this is just a one-way game. No, I don't think so. I think Leeds are going to make it hard for them. Mm. Um, I think uh, I don't. I can't see Leeds winning. But um, you know, Leeds Leeds are good at keeping teams uh, under lock and key for. You know, long long yeah. periods of the game, and I think uh, Man City they're trying to they're trying too hard in front of the back four. They're trying to pass too much, too square, make perfect goals, and um, I think it'd be frustrating for. I think Leeds will make it frustrating for. So uh, I'm going to go for a draw for this one. You're going to get for a draw. I shall put you in there, um, Brad. I mean, Man City five in five sat the top of the pile. Leeds only won one in five, uh, but they did put they did put up a good fight against Chelsea, just losing out by the single goal in five at the weekend. Yeah, yeah, they 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 probably needed a performance like that, and in a weird way, when when it's not going well for you, like it hasn't for Leeds so far this season. Yes, they've had a few good results, but I think even Leeds fans, even the the most pessimistic of Leeds fans at the start of the season, is. But it is probably thinking, I didn't expect it to be this much of a struggle. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the performance needs to be matched now against Man City. I think that's a game that Leeds fans will look at and go, yes, we lost to Chelsea, but we did it with a bit of pride and effort. If we can do that against Man City, whilst we're still not picking up points, it's encouraging signs that we're going to get it right and fortunes will tr- change. And this could be a game where they only lose it 1-0. It could also be a game that I feel that a certain player who's gone off the boil at Man City, like Kevin De Bruyne, could steal the show and go and grab himself a brace and maybe set up another one and it could be 3-0. So, either way, unfortunately for Leeds fans, Man City are winning this game. It just depends by how many. Indeed. And I reckon by the end of the, the games on Thursday that I might not have caught you up, but I've been on exactly the same <laughs> points difference. I'm agreeing with you every time here. To me, <laughs> this is Man City's Leicester Newcastle. I mean, you know, you can only play who's against you and it was a good win. But, you know, Leicester had their own old swagger back and, you know, we looked good. And I think this Leeds are going to make. I'm sorry, Steve. I think Leeds are going to make um, Manchester City look good. Um, Brighton Wolves. Uh, Brighton. 
I don't know what to make of Brighton. I mean, they're still up there. They're still in 11th, but they've lost one and drawn four in the last five. Uh, and But Wolves are still up there in ninth, uh, only one point above them, having won one in the last five. Yeah, unfortunately, again, uh, over the weekend, Wolves, I thought they'd done all right till the uh, the plonker of a centre forward got himself sent off. <laughs> uh, and, you know, so going on that result in the last couple alone, I think Wolves will win this one. Right. So you are going for Wolves. Now, I know, I know, Brad, try and keep your love for uh, Graham Potter in and don't just base it on that. But um, who, who are you going to go for with this one? Oh, sorry, Chris. You said Wolves and Brighton, and I use that to cure my insomnia because I can only imagine the biggest, dullest dishwatering game in my life. You've got a team with all defence and no firepower against Brighton and Fraud Albion. It's ending nil nil. It's last on the. It's last on match of day, and it's and it's going to finish that way. Uh, let's go, please. <laughs> and again, I'm only going off what I've gone in the long ball here. I've gone for a one one, so I haven't gone for a lot better, I'm afraid. Uh, but we're agreeing. But talking of snooze fest, Steve. Burnley Watford. I mean, those two games you could just intertwine them. Uh, Burnley. Well, it's a six-pointer for both of them, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think Burnley's due a win. I think they're due a performance as well. Uh, Watford, you know, I think Watford only play against the top teams. I, I think they struggle with the, the lower teams. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, you know, Burnley are due one. So I think Burnley's going to win this quite easy. Right. So you are going for a Burnley win. Um Brad, or should I just tell you what you're going for? <laughs> One of these is going to win this game 1-0. I just can't figure out who's going to win it 1-0. Because it's just one of them games, you just read them teams <laughs> and you just hear a scrappy 1-0, don't you? You know it's going to be like some 89th minute goal from like the second chance of the game. Burnley Watford, Burnley Watford, Burnley Watford. You know what? Just because Dan, just because he tunes in and we and we normally depress his evening and talk about Burnley, I'm going to agree with Steve on this one. And I'm also going to say that Burnley nick this. They're going to get the one nil. Right. I'm going to have this. Try and cheer Dan up. It is Christmas after all. I'll be Christmassy towards him. Where are we here? So you are going for a. Burnley win. Can I just say I've just actually double checked my my oops double checked my um long ball and I actually gone for nil nil in the last game. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe but we are going to disagree, Brad. We are Yay. going to disagree. I can, um, I can have a nine point lead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it will be Equal boring. I, I, I think I think the people at the BBC are going to be sat there going, oh, "Who do we play last? <laughs> Which is the worst game?" Um, unfortunately, I do think it's going to be that. Scott's gone for a Watford win, but I'm, I'm going. I've gone for another nil nil. I just think it's two teams that are desperate for the points, but neither of them will do enough to get it. I think they literally will cancel each other out. So we disagree there. Um, uh, uh, finally, Brad. Um, who did I get? Oh, they'll do it in a different order on the long ball. They do it on the different order. Palace, Southampton, uh, Steve. Southampton, not out of trouble. Um, and they've not won in five. Three losses and a draw. Um, Palace got a good win at the weekend over Everton. But then, you know, who doesn't? With a little bit of help from Mr Gray. And three losses before that. Which way do you see this one going? Purely because they won the weekend, and I thought they looked quite all right going forward. I think uh, Palace are going to win this one. I think they've got Palace the five. Going to win it. Right. Can I just say, guys, I'm just going to go back to the Norwich Villa game because I actually went for uh, – what did I go for on the long ball? And I'm going to match it up. I went for a Villa 1-0 win. So I'm actually going to go and change that. To an Aston Villa win, so that's two. Oh, I'm having a bigger lead. I like this. Keep putting these <laughs> up here. Come on, keep changing them. 
I hadn't hadn't had it up, if they pardon the expression, by then. Um, so, Brad, Palace, Southampton. How do you how do you see this one? I'm going to follow my bold prediction that you probably saw me make on Doug's channel. Um, I think this has actually got goals galore. I think this will be an end-to-end game. I think Southampton could really use um, a result. Uh, and I think they'll be more attacking and trying to get that result. And Crystal Palace, uh, yeah, are doing well this season. And it was a good 3-1 win against... Um, Everton, and I can't sit here and say against the part it was against the poor Everton side because we, we're not really sat here bemoaning our win against a very poor Newcastle side at the end of the day. You beat what's in front of you, regardless of your form. Uh, yep. they probably needed it because they probably felt their draws were getting a bit stale, but I think they're gonna both be open and up for this game. And I'm going for a draw. Oh, and I think they're yeah. high scoring. Uh, so Steve's gone for Palace. Brad, you've gone for a draw. I agree with one of you. That's Steve. It is. <laughs> it is. I, I think I just think Palace. I, I just I haven't been impressed with Southampton at all uh this season. And I don't like them because they sold us two dud defenders. <laughs> um so yeah, I uh I, I can but all joking apart, I, I just think Palace. I like them. I like them uh, under Vieira. I think he's got them, you know, purring along and, and they played well against us. So I think I can only see a, a season of struggle for Southampton. Shall I just stick you in the West Ham box there, Steve? Yep, 3-0. <laughs> Those are the, these are the shortest predictions we've got here. Uh, well, West Ham, I mean, they, they're continuing... They are having a bit of a Leicester season, aren't they, Brad? I mean, you know, they're up there in you know in fourth place still. Um, although they've only won one in five, you know, and, and they could only draw against Burnley. Um, Arsenal, I just, just Jekyll and Hyde. I thought at the start of the season, I thought they're going to go down. Then they sort of went on this run, and now it's like lost one, lost, lost one. It's almost like you know they're dancing up the table. Um, Oh, quite clever that one. It lost one, <laughs> lost, lost one. <laughs> um, and I should pay myself more. That's all I can say. Which way do you see this one going? Honestly, I'm same as uh, Steve. I see West Ham winning this. I just feel that there's still way too many issues. This whole Obama Youngest thing was ridiculous. I didn't know about it. And I asked someone to clear, clarify what actually happened. In the Aubameyang situation, it's something daft about being allowed to go and get a bloody tattoo. I don't know. I was just like, I heard it, and I still don't believe what I've heard. It's ridiculous, and they're they're just disjointed team, Arsenal. But you know, Ralph doesn't always get it right. I think that's fair to clear to clear to see that he doesn't always approach the bigger teams right. Um, so it's one of them when you beat a team like that, but. I think they'll return to normal Arsenal. They're, they're on a bit of a bad run. You know, like I said, Ralph got it wrong. Um, and again, like against against other clubs, the time it's hard to turn it around, it was way too late against Arsenal. And I don't think West Ham have too much to worry about here. They were unlucky against Burnley. You know, after them days, it does. They, they had that many chances, they didn't take it. So West Ham will just get another win here against Arsenal. I've got to be honest with you... Um... I forgot what I was going to say now. I'm going to be honest with you about something. No, the 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 Abangaman or whatever he's called, Bangerman. He um, going to France. And you said this, I think, on the show the other night. Why would you go to France for a tattoo? Uh, I think didn't he say it was Barcelona, not France? I don't know. You might be right. But even so. But yeah, even why so, you know, there for a it's ridiculous. we're talking. Yeah. I'm, we're talking. I'm sure Steve knows about half a dozen tattooists in London, don't you, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> I mean that, that to me does sound like he's gone it's like he's gone to someone and then gone hey look how much you know because I'm counting watch how much I can take the piss out of my own boss hey boss um, yeah. my yeah. grandma in Barcelona last will and testimony is to give me a tattoo just in case so can I go to Barcelona I don't, I don't know what What did he say to him that made him yeah. think it was so and, let, and, and, and Arteta's letting him go with all the travel restrictions that are about at the moment and the risks that are involved. I mean, I know Madison last year, he, you know, he was a bit of a naughty boy, 
but Brendan Rodgers sorted it. And it's fine. Now, this is the second time that a bang, banger man has uh, has done this. And I think, like you say, I think he's taken the piss. I think there's unhappiness in the camp. I'm going for a West Ham win because I just think they're on fire at the moment. And I'm loving, loving what they are doing. Uh, it's nice. I mean, I would wish it was Leicester, but if Leicester can't, I want to see another team smash those uh, those big teams. West Ham are doing it. Great in Europe. They had our kind of uh, uh, of a of a mini league in Europe with a quite an easy group. Um, so well done, West Ham, and I think you're going to get three points on um, whenever it is Tuesday, Wednesday that game. Um, now Tottenham, Steve, you're going to be you're going to be torn here because you you normally go opposite to Leicester in the hope that reverse psychology wins. But you hate Tottenham. Scott's going yeah. for a three-two Leicester win. Are you in agreement? I've got to go with Leicester. I've got to go. I don't want to because, like I say, every time I go with, for Leicester, they they lose. But hopefully, you know that's not going to happen. Yeah. But uh, it was nice. To see, it was nice to see him scoring a few goals. I know you know you're going about Newcastle, but Newcastle could have made it hard for them. Yeah. I think they, there was periods of the game where where they did, but confidence wise and. Letting just letting Leicester go off the reins. That's what he needs to do. He used to he used to stop thinking about all the game plans changing them for opposition, whatever. Just concentrate on Leicester City. Let them get their own confidence. Let them go out and just attack, attack, attack. If you you attack, attack, and you lose two nil, one nil, or whatever, you, the fans don't mind because that's what yeah. they want the seats to do. But to come up with these, oh, we're a top six team. We're going to play like a top six team, and we're going to. Stifle the opposition, hope that we score. And that's that bores me, bores me to tears. Yeah, and I think West yeah. Ham, like you say, West Ham are doing that. They seem to be, you know, just go out there and play your own game. And hopefully, Leicester will do that. And I mm. hope to stick five. I hope to stick five over them. Brad, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I dare say that Leicester are back, but it was probably the first time this season where we've played well for ninety minutes. And yeah, I was surprised that. How easily you know Newcastle turned over and let, let us tickle the belly, but it was Newcastle at the end of the day. You can only play who's in front of you, but it, it 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 kind of all came right in the one game. You know, yes, it was Newcastle, but yes, we played well, like I say, for ninety minutes. No, we didn't do a lot of pissing about at the back as we normally do, passing side to side. Whether that was Indeedy, and I think it might be you that said it, Brad, Indeedy going into the back four saying, I'm booting this up, I'm not messing about at the back, who knows? But I know I know, um, zonal marking sort of slowly, slowly dying, but I think Brendan sort of seen the light with that one. We didn't concede from a corner and they had six of them. Yeah. More of the same, please, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. If they play like that and they keep that defensive line that I talked about on the post-match show, um, check it out if you haven't already. It was a really good show for once. We was able to be cheerful. Didn't mean that we don't have a good show. What I meant is it was a nice show because it was a cheerful <laughs> show. Um, that's your eyes going out the window. Out. But, yeah, do check them all out. But if you if you want something that's going to keep you in a good mood, check that one out because we played a different defensive line. We broke that defensive triangle slash U shape that we normally care keep. And if you do that against Spurs, the one thing you can guarantee um, is probably Kane scores. And yeah. you can guarantee that there's goals because when Leicester plays Spurs, it, it's very, I can't remember a time it was probably nil nil against Leicester and Spurs. But with that being said, you know, first of all, I want to say, thankfully, by the sounds of things, everybody's okay at Spurs with what's happened with the, yeah. the outbreak of COVID, that nobody's suffering too badly with it but they've not trained in a while we're still it could be last minute we know what these things that these decisions are like not 100% sure that this game's going to go ahead but should it go ahead unfortunately as it might sound um, you have to be ready to take that as best you can because mm. if we're playing a fully fit Spurs side, I would actually be going against the grain and probably picking a Spurs side. But because they've not really trained too much, they've had everything disruptions. Leicester have got to, in a way, try to use that to their advantage on the pitch because they're not going to be as fit as they are. No matter how good you are, you need time on the training ground. And they've not had a game in a long time in footballing world. 
So I'm going to be a bit more pos- po- positive and see Le- Leicester win this game. Yeah. I've I've had to take this. I don't know how Santa wears that hat for as long as he does. You don't have to make your head itch. <laughs> you. But yeah, I mean, like you say, you know Kane's going to score no matter how bad he is. Um, yeah. If it goes ahead, I, I mean, I, I, I hate. I don't hate Tottenham, but I don't like since since they've become more rivals since the since we won the Premier League, and obviously they came, you know, third in a in a two horse race, of course. Yeah. But I I I I just want to see us. I want to see us because we 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 haven't. Been, I mean, even last season when we were doing well, I think they stuffed four past us. I just want to yeah. see us come and do well. So for that reason, I'm going for Leicester Tottenham. Um, Steve, Chelsea, Everton. I mean, you know, we. Demari Gray had a great game for Palace the other night, <laughs> and um, and and I got an assist for them. Everton are in big trouble, aren't they? I think so. I think he's a. Uh, I think he's going to be in a position where it's going to be three or four games, and you know, he, he's going to go. Um, mm. The players don't seem to be. On the same par as him, and I don't think they they like his methods. Uh, the substitution on of the weekend and the reaction he got, that and the look on Rafa's face and the look on the players' face, I, I don't think he's got the, the dressing room at all. Mm. And I think uh, I think they'll realise, you know, soon in the club that he's not an Everton manager because he doesn't suit the style of Everton. And I think. Uh, the club knows it, and I think the players know it. So I think Chelsea will win this quite easy. Brad, I mean, I thought I thought Rafa was a a really good fit for Everton. Uh, I thought they'd, they'd got some good players in uh, that uh, that Ancelotti had brought in, but they've spent a lot of money. Uh, nothing's worked for them, and this doesn't seem to be working either. No, um, it really doesn't. And I think that proves there's a lot of disdain at Everton at the moment. And I think it's going to be a blessing in disguise because, in my opinion, when you look at the success that he brought to Liverpool, you would think that Everton fans would actually be jumping in joy at the prospect that if he brings even half the success that he brought to Liverpool in terms of where he had them finishing and what he won for them, that they would be ready to rub it in their nose and just turn around to Liverpool fans and say, here's one of your heroes lifting trophies for us. How's that feel? Because there's going to be people out there who, even if they say, ah, we're not bothered, we're not bothered, we're not bothered, there will be Liverpool fans that will be bothered if they saw that. Yes, I think Everton fans have already dismissed him as a manager and I think in the best way possible, funny enough, an ex-club is going to be Rafa's last game, I think this is going to be an absolute morning. I've already said it on Doug Shannon and I've gone for it. I'm going to go for it in the long ball. It's going to be a 5 or 6 nil. And this is going to be Rafa's last game as Everton boss. I really can see it. This will be the thing that kicks him out the door and it'll be the best thing to happen to Rafa because he doesn't need a team like that. He doesn't need a team that's not in any harmony, that won't be bothered about playing for him. And Everton fans couldn't give a monkey's what he's doing. Yeah. A lot of them, I know there might be some that say, well, I actually don't mind Rafa, and, and that's fair. That's that's cool. I'm not saying every Everton fan, but the way he's been treated, for me, logically, if that was another rival manager of us and he, and, and he achieved well with them, I'd want him to come here and win us stuff and then go, hey, well, he also won us with us, and that's better, in my opinion, because he won it with us. You know what I mean? I'd like to have that about me as a fan against some rival clubs. I don't understand the disdain for it. Chelsea only lost one in five, and that was at the West Ham game. Um, yeah, Everton have Everton have only won one in five, and that was against Arsenal. And I think, yeah, say if anybody beats Arsenal, it, it could go either way with their games. You know, they, they, they lost to Man City, they lost to Brentford, um, lost heavily to Liverpool, and of course they, they lost to Palace last time out. This this is this is a this is the full house, gents. I can't, I'd already put it in there because I put my name in before I put Brad's in. But you can probably see it is a full house and um, I can't see anything other than a, a Chelsea win. And I think Rafa will be gone, possibly, before the January transfer window. Last game here, Steve. Uh, the team that we beat uh, quite easily up against the uh, team that likes to score for fun. 
It's, it's going to be could be a cricket score, couldn't it? I think it's going to be another four four nil. Um, like I say, Newcastle are not going to hurt you. Uh, they're not definitely not going to hurt Liverpool, mm. and I think um, the so slick Liverpool. You know, it's going to be four easy goals. Might be more. Yeah, oh, I, I I agree, uh, Brad. I can't remember what you went for on uh, on the show the other night, but uh, uh, you got to go to Liverpool, haven't you? I went for a hammer, and mate. Um, I'm going to throw this out there now. Southampton could be finally passing the torch of the team that's known that always gets beat by nine goals or concedes nine goals. This genuinely has the potential for Liverpool's front three to run riot because they're going to go to the African Cup of Nations. Again, assuming that still goes ahead, that could be off now, we don't know, which is even worse for the Premier League opposition defenders if, if that doesn't go ahead and the Premiership continues um, because that's the relief work that most teams are looking forward to, them players being away. And I yeah. think this is going to be a mauling. This is going to be a high-score win for Liverpool. I'm going to be honest with you, I, again, <laughs> no surprise here, I'm going to say, but yes, I agree with you both, and I could I could see this being the 9-0. Dan, welcome along, uh, late to the party, but I was cooking the boss an exquisite to meal. It's their anniversary today, six years together. Kate, why, is the question, <laughs> why? I don't know. Kate. If you can hear us, type yes in the comments. We'll come and send people around. Don't worry, we understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, congratulations to the pair of you. Indeed. Uh, well, I hope I, I had to. I did have to double look at it twice, but apparently it's a lamb shank. Uh, no, <laughs> that's what they call it, is it? <laughs> that's what apparently they call it in Burnley. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, I've gone now. <laughs> and that is game week 17. And we've just got a small matter now of uh, the weekend's games. And we're going to come straight to that uh, after this. <laughs> A bit of a long one there, but it did give me a chance to get changed. I was getting a bit hot in the sweatshirt. Um, I tell you what, talking of lamb shanks, I'm going to play this one just for you, Dan and Kate. Have you been naughty or nice? Oh, behave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Dan, Dan, Dan. Uh, <laughs> Kate wants to say, she says, yes, Brad. <laughs> Don't worry, Kevin, we'll sort it out. Don't worry. Uh, Doug, welcome along. Uh, I don't know whether there was a delay, but a lot of things messages just coming through. B Crom, good evening. How are you? Um despite the insult, um Dan's gone for a Leicester 2 0 win. B Crom, everybody needs to thank indeed he as the new Baron A Cross. Yeah. yeah. He, had, he, had a, he had a great game. I thought he'd give at least uh, two penalties away. Uh, he's gone Liverpool. Aiden, the Leicester Fox. Good evening, sir. He's gone Liverpool to beat Spurs 2-1. I do, do hope so. Doug, good evening, sir. Welcome along. Uh, he's gone 2-1 hey, no. Spurs. Um, B. Crom, um, F. Tottenham. Well, I presume you don't mean fry or flap, but <laughs> I think we get the message. Uh, Doug's gone Liverpool 4, Newcastle 0. I say Kate, Kate does want to help. And Melia says, why are Burnley so tight at the back? I think that's what you need to ask Kate and Dan, isn't it? Um, <laughs> he said, um, sorry, guys, you take her away, never get time to myself, says Dan. You love it. You look, I, I see the Instagram posts. I know what you two are like. Love birds, I tell you. Love birds. Right, um, Steve, so we are coming up to 
the weekend games. And I know it's a, it's, it's a bit strange this, but uh, it's coming up to Christmas, so I didn't want to sort of tie everybody up with the uh, uh, two shows in in the week. Um, starting off, Manchester United, Brighton and Hove. Yeah, I think this one. Um... Brighton are the draw specialist at the moment. I think they'll give uh, the same game at Man United. I don't. Uh, I can't see him winning, but uh, I think they'll. You know, I think they'll go there for the draw. So uh, yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to go for a draw on that one. Brad, Brighton and Fraud Albion are going to get beat. Manchester United are going to click into gear. It's going to finally stop being scruffy, and they're going to put Brighton. They're going to play into their hands trying to be attacking and I think Ronaldo bags a couple in a, in a comfortable win for United. I've just got that feeling. You, you you are to Brighton what Steve is to Arsenal and Tottenham, aren't you? Really? Yeah, the, 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 the biggest difference is, is Brighton keep proving me right. <laughs> <laughs> Not smart. I'm sure eventually Spurs will keep proving Steve wrong, but for now it's working in my favour. But you got you gotta you gotta say here, Brad, you know, we are talking about the future of English football, the future English manager here. And, Where? you know, <laughs> Brighton and Hove Albion, you know. Oh, well, I, thought you meant, I thought you meant Ralph was going to take over. <laughs> um, having said all that, all joking aside, I can't see them beating Man United. But I think United, I mean, who, who did who did, who did I go in the last one? It Brighton to beat Brentford. But that will, that's a, I think we said that would be tight. I'm going to go for the draw with you, Steve. I think you're spot on there. I think uh, they're blowing hot and cold, Man United. So I am going to go for um, a, a, a draw. Um, uh, well, we're having a spat, guys. We're having a spat. A bit of beef in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> Bullmore House. I'll pack my stuff and wait outside for you to save me from the man. He's already threatened to throw a shank bone at my head. <laughs> that's what. That's what he calls it, is it? <laughs> oh, wow. I always used to know it's a BJ, but there we go. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> we're after the watershed. This is what I have to put up with, Kate. You know, whether you want to, if you, you can come down south and, you know, I, I, I will look after you or you can, or you can go up north and Brad will look after you. I can't that say Steve, okay. he's, Steve. Steve's happily married, so I can't say anything <laughs> about Steve. <laughs> a bit of shank in the chat. Well, I tell you what, you know, if you two are going to have a domestic, I think you should sort of, you know, get your own room, as they say. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I've got, to, I've got to curb my sense of humour in. It, talking of Burnley, it's the Battle of the Clarets on uh, on the weekend on Saturday. Um, Villa against Burnley, Steve. How can you? Uh, how can you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I don't know if I dare put up what uh, what the Dan's just come back with. But do you see who? Which which of the Clarets do you see coming out on top? Well, Villa going to be uh, disappointed over the uh, the game in Budweek, so I think they're going to uh, put it right against Burnley. Hmm. Burnley are in so much trouble, Sean, and I think Dan is with that comment as well. Um, they, they they need to start with you know they're getting the odd draw here and there, but they do need to start getting some wins. Can they go away to Villa Park and get a win? Uh, no, I don't. I think um, I think Villa. Hello, Mrs. Riley. By the way, I, I think Villa are. Very steadily, um, you know, improving uh, under Gerard. He came in there. He seemed to have also ridden a bit of the new manager bounce, and now we're seeing that Gerard starting to also continue that effect with his managerial experience and, and from his time at Rangers. So I think he'll continue it. Um, I don't think it'd be a glorious game by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I just can't see them losing at home. Uh, against Burnley. Dan, Kate, I know you're in the chat and I'd really love to say that Burnley are going to get something. But you're not. I'm sorry, you're not. You're going down with the Norwich. Um, not shank. down with the lamb, lamb shank. You're going down with the Norwich. I, I just think, you, you know, you, we are... 
how many, you know, we are 15 games. I know you're a game behind everybody else, but 15 games. It's, it's going to be four that are going to go down, I think. I think it's going to be Watford, Burnley, Newcastle and Norwich, between those four. And obviously Nor Nor uh, Newcastle, sorry, have got the advantage that they've got a bit of money to spend in the January window. And it might be a couple of players that, of yours that they may take. Who knows? I just can't see this. I'm sorry, guys, but it's going to be a Villa win for me as well. <sighs> He's never going to talk to me again, is he? <laughs> Sorry, Dan. I really am, really am sorry. Do, do I sound genuine? I've watched this on YouTube. Listen on your favourite podcast platform or ask your smart speaker to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. Subscribe, like, follow, and join in now. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and smash those likes. It does mean a lot to the channel. Um, the I think the argument's still going on <laughs> between the husband and uh, and the partner here. Well, when you spent, hang on. You know, first of all, he said, "Ooh, three points on Wednesday. A point at Villa away form is better than home." But let's see. Um, when you spend your anniversary watching everyone put your team down, and the only time you talk is through the platform <laughs> years ago i can remember actually my son texting me something and we were both in the same room and you're getting a bit like that you two you're in the same room and you're talking on here uh, and guess what not overly worried at the moment burnley start playing on form come january and there's also the transfer window just yet we will we'll will see for now but i think most fans have prepped themselves for going down fortunately i think they have kate uh, the thing I don't get about Burnley, says Mella, the Watford fan, good evening, welcome along, is that Ben, me and Tarkovsky always stay fit. A couple of injuries and they're down. I think though both of those, I think, are interested in Newcastle. Right, Steve, um, let's have a look and get away from the domestics. Brentford, go down to Southampton. Yeah, I think this one, um, I think this one will be a high-scoring draw. I think Southampton will want to try and go at him, and I think Brentford will do the same. And um, I can see a few goals in this one. Indeed. Um, Brad, I mean, Southampton just can't win a game at the moment. No, they can't. But this will, this is the sort of game that Brentford, we've seen this season, seems to just randomly slip up and just not be able to turn up and they get turned over a little bit. And I've just got this feeling that that'll happen to them against Southampton. Um, I think Southampton are going to end up just getting a win out of this game. Uh, just on that basis, I, every every logic dictates that Brentford should win it, but I don't know. It's just something about Brentford at my, at this season. It just seems that when we think they're slipping or doing well, they go and lose yeah. to a team like Southampton. So, yeah, Southampton are winning it for me, mate. Mm -hmm. Brad, why are you doing this to me? Because I told you since day one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I, yeah, I just have a feeling this is going to be a Southampton win. They need a win, and they're at home, and it's getting into December. It's a cold, and uh, it's right on the on the key, on the uh, um, on the water there at Southampton. I just, yeah, I think I think they're going to win the battle of the uh, the, the red and white stripes. But, of course, the big match that we're going to be talking about this weekend, and we need to know who's going to win, is Dan versus Kate. And which way do you see that going, Steve? <laughs> Dan's got no chance. <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> I was thinking that. And, a way, and a way, an easier way win for Kate, I think. I think he's going yeah. down I think he's going down way before Burnley does. <laughs> if he's in, I don't think he is actually tonight. Looking at what's going on, he may have to be on the on the uh, on the couch. Um, Steve, I don't even think he'll be privy to that at the moment. Should we be having the dog house about the dog? Yes. Well, he's, she's already sent him to his mother's. Hello, Mrs. Riley. Um, Watford Palace, Steve. Yeah, this is a game that Watford are going to need the points. Um, yes. I think Palace only play against the top teams and I think they struggle against uh, these kind of clubs. So I think uh, Watford will be, uh, they'll be claiming this one. All right. Brad? 
Uh, I actually think that this is the sort of game that Palace will win comfortably. I think if you look at how Palace like to play at home, I mean, the way they pressed and played against us, uh, I think it's kind of, you know, what Watford try and do. They try and play a, a counter-attacking football and if they get pressed and caught out, like they seem to do, um, I think they could end up doing, Palace could do to Watford what Leicester end up doing and, and score quite a few goals. Um might be a bit closer, might be a little bit of a 3-2, might be a bit of a thriller, but I, I'm going for Palace to edge it out one way or another. I'm completely torn with this one. Um, at one point, I thought Watford might get it. Then I'm thinking, well, Palace, you know, they have got a good, good manager. But I, 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 want, I want Watford to do well because obviously they've got Claudio, but I just don't think he's the sort of manager... That actually, no, no. Well, we say we've seen he can't. He didn't do it with Fulham uh, for the relegation slap. But I'm actually going to go down the middle with this one. I think he will actually get a point on this one. Um, West Ham Norwich. It, it's just getting worse and worse. <laughs> December for Norwich. We thought we had a tough, uh, tough one, but uh, Norwich haven't got an easy December. Um, this one, Steve. West Ham. West Ham. Yeah. I can't see Norwich um, getting anything at West Ham. I think West Ham are uh, they're on fire at the moment for their for their, for their season. So I think uh, I think they they'll, they'll win easy. I, I I agree totally with you. I just think I can't see Norwich get getting getting anything at West Ham. West Ham are just on fire at the moment. You're gonna make it a full house, Brad. In a weird way, I, I don't want to, but I am actually going to make it a full house, m- mostly because I, I, I was I was one that correctly said that West Ham this season, the biggest holdback for them uh, this season is they come up against a team that's not doing too great and they drop some points. And they drop points, whether it was unlucky or not, they drop points against Burnley. And they'd have, a lot of people would have been thinking Burnley are going to, take a bit of a hide in there maybe but it wasn't the case but I I just think this is going to be one of them where West Ham just about get away with it uh, and I think it'll be like a late 1-0 win to the Hammers just because it's Upton Park uh, well not Upton Park they haven't played there for years because you know what I meant <laughs> um, I, was, I was having fun flashbacks that's what I was doing there uh, don't no, give you flashing on my channel mate yeah well it's past Watershed now uh, no, I don't want to call people for life. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I I think they'll just edge it, but this isn't a Norwich that is the same as like five or six weeks ago. But, yeah, no. West Ham just come out on top of me. Steve, I might as well just put you straight in, uh, in Leeds, shouldn't I? Leeds, I want the team from the 70s to turn up and I want them to give every Arsenal player a tattoo, which, you know, would be nice. <laughs> I think we know what you mean when you say tattoo. You know? <laughs> um, I mean, the other day, Brad, we got asked if you remember by Anthony, who, which team do we hate most in the Premier League? And I actually, we both went for Arsenal, didn't we, at the moment? But I'd forgotten yeah. Leeds were there, and they're not particularly. I just, I just remember, I remember the old Leeds and. I never used to like them. I, you know, like Steve says, the old, the the the, the leads of the seventies. You know, they 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 they, pl- they didn't necessarily play by the rules, did they, Steve? Or they bent oh, them. I watched the classic game. I think uh, when they played Chelsea, mm. and uh, the tattles that were flying through there, and not one player got booked or sent off. But yeah, uh, it, was, you know, it was cracking, cracking to watch. It was different head. times, and it was a classic game. I was just going to say, uh, I think that's the thing that everybody remembers: Leeds, Chelsea. But yeah, I, 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 I don't like them. But I, I am actually going to have to go. I'm sorry for an Arsenal win here, Brad. See, I remember a completely different Leeds for obvious reasons. I'm, I'm far younger than the pair of you. Um, yeah, well, I can mute you. Yeah. <laughs> Steve can't though. Uh, so when you unmute me, you can still hear it. It'll be all right. Um, no, I remember the the leads that were sponsored by Packard Bell and had the likes of Jim Floyd Hasselbank and and you know David Batty and David O'Leary's leads was it? David O'Leary's leads, yeah, exactly. Mm. 
I remember, I vaguely remember like Gordon Strachan being at Leeds and that, and, and all, you know, Nigel Martin and players like that playing for, for Leeds. I remember, you know, Lucas Smith, etc. The list was, it was a great Leeds side to watch. They were entertaining to watch. Bit of a nasty club, but they were probably a tame version of Millwall, to be fair, for, for what it was like. But as, as, as it was on the football pitch, they were entertaining to watch. But, this Leeds don't learn their lesson. And uh, I think they're lucky they're playing an Arsenal managed by a man that clearly can't manage a bunch of individuals and can only put the cones out backwards. And I think Leeds will just sneak. And I, I, I will call it a shock result because Leeds aren't having the greatest season. But I think this will be a game... These, this is going to be a game where Leeds pick the win, and it's going to be that, that these sort of results that'll be enough to keep them in the Premiership and away from say uh, away from danger. For me, brilliant, brilliant. On to Sunday, and the, fortunately for Leicester, the early kickoff. We know what happens when we do, do early kickoffs, don't we? We 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 get stuffed, which is probably apt coming up to Christmas. Uh, we're away at Goodison for the first um, half of a. Um, Early December Scouse double. Um, I think it's 12 o'clock it kicks off. Yeah, 12 o'clock it kicks off on Sky. Which way do you see this one going, Steve? I mean, after after, after the Newcastle game, I've got, and the way Everton are playing, I've got high hopes. But before, if we go back to before the Newcastle game, it could be a boring nil-nil. Well, I'm hoping, like, uh, like Brad said, that, you know, the manager will be gone then, and you know they'll they'll be manage, managerless. Mm. And um, I always think Leicester do well up there when they when they play play away. And I'm hoping because of the, the way Everton are playing, and I think they won't get nothing in the the previous game. I think Leicester will. You know, I don't want to go with Leicester again in case they lose, but I think you know I think Leicester will win. If we if they do, Steve, we're going to blame you. You realise that, don't you? I do know, yeah, and I'm trying my hardest not to. <laughs> <laughs> There's always going to be a scapegoat, you know. Oh, yeah. um, Brad, I could say early kickoff, but if we play like we did against Newcastle, if Rafa has gone, I'm trying to think that, that, that when they've stopped managing in the past, there's been one of their ex-players that's taken charge and he's always he's always done very well when he's been in caretaker charge and my mind i can't think of his name but ferguson yeah, yeah duncan, duncan, ferguson. duncan ferguson yes yeah and he's always done right now well i don't know if he's still at the club or not so might not be a good idea if rafa goes can we, can we keep rafa until then and then go can we get him sacked that was last bad game but uh, can you see everton getting anything uh, from us brad it, for me, it all depends on their situation. If I go off what my gut tells me, uh, Rafa will be gone. And the way more times than not this season, and more times in general, let's be honest, uh, a second of a manager normally suddenly seems to miraculously wake the players up. Maybe it's because they feel they've let the manager down and he's, they've cost them a job, so they want to prove they're still together as a unit and they go out and get a win. Um but I don't see Everton doing that. But if I'm going to be bold and go with my prediction that Rafa's not in charge, because if Rafa's in charge, we win it. For me, I, I agree with Steve. I think Rafa in charge, we, we cruise it. Uh, they'll be just, they'll be absolutely battered and bruised after losing to Chelsea. But I think if they've not got a manager, and if he is still at the club, especially if it's Duncan Ferguson in charge, I think we'll get a. I think Everton will get a draw out of us somehow. It just seems to be. How it is this season. So it still wouldn't be a bad thing, especially if we beat Spurs. I still think a point away from home is a good point. But it all depends if they've got a manager or not at that point, whether it's still Rafa or not for me. So I'm going for a draw off my own gut feeling that Rafa won't be in charge. With Damari Gray getting a goal against us, probably. No um, doubt, no doubt, mate, from a corner, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, but we'll be back. We've had these false dawns before, haven't we? Um mm. I, I, I mean, a lot of these games, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen midweek and, and that could affect things. But I just I just hope we can continue 
the form that we, the, the way that we played against Newcastle. Because I think if we do, we'll get something from um, from Spurs, and then we will go on and beat a, an extremely poor and, like you say, demoralised Everton. Um, I, I I hope Rafa's still there because, like you said, uh, Brad, if he is, it, you know, we definitely win. But I'm going to go for the win anyway because, I, as I say, I believe. You watch, this will be the, the biggest uh, non-event ever. But I do believe this is the start of our turnaround now for the season. And it's a, it's a, a must-win game in the fact that we've got City and Liverpool coming up over the over Christmas and, and on, on the uh, Boxing Day on the 28th. So kind of <laughs> hope that we get some points here. Um, Steve, Wolves are going to be hosting Chelsea on the Sunday, not on telly. I think, uh, I think Chelsea will turn up for that one, don't you? I think they'll turn it up, but I think um, Wolves with their record against the uh, the top teams, they're going to make it hard for them at the moment. And I think um, due results, due things the way Chelsea have been drawn to like games and the way they're playing, I think uh, Wolves will frustrate them and they'll catch them on the break. And I, I can see Wolves winning this one. Wow. Okay. That's your uh, I do not believe it one of the. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brad? Uh, I think Steve's right in the sense that I think Wolves can definitely frustrate a side. They've proven that the one thing that hasn't changed since Nuno left is uh, another manager from that same league in Portuguese knows how to get a team to be resolute and difficult to break down at the back. Um, it's not the first time they've been resolute either against a team like this. In fact, it's probably been something that you could say is a bit of a common trend for Wolves when they play these sort of teams. And I think it'll be enough for them to get a point. I don't see them winning it. But Chelsea are misfiring. Maybe, maybe you know, when they say it's who blinks first, I think, unfortunately, Chelsea, are, their eyes twitching right now and they need to make sure they refocus and don't blink. Because this is pivotal for Chelsea to still be talking about a title race to make sure they don't keep dropping any more points or letting letting some late goals in. I think they need a nice, tidy 1-0 win. But my my brain says just give Wolves some credit to take a draw with the form Chelsea are in. I can't see past... I think Chelsea are going to come back. They, they were my 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 favourites to win the, 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 the league. I think they will. I still have a feeling that there's more in the tank from them. Um, and I'm going for a Chelsea win there. Um Newcastle, I mean, they, <laughs> bless them. Um, they get the first win and they get stuffed 4 0 by Leicester. They have a, <laughs> a trip to Liverpool and then Man City come visiting. I mean, you know, it, it, it sort of book your tickets for Blackburn away, isn't it, really? Stevie, this is, this is so bad for Newcastle. I can't see Newcastle getting out there off, to be honest. I think uh, <laughs> Man City are too slick. They're gonna play. They're gonna play through uh, Newcastle really, really, really easy. Um, mm. You know, Newcastle struggle against teams that don't set up like Man City. But Man City, you know, they'll keep them pinned back in their half, and it'll just be Newcastle trying to keep the the score down. I think. I don't think that they're even going to go out and try and win it. No. But, uh, yeah. Definitely, Newcastle for you, Brad. <laughs> Not a chance, mate. Does, does, does anyone, do any of you used to remember that game uh, between Bournemouth and Man City where, where Eddie Howe came out after the game and said, oh, I felt we deserved a draw purely on the basis that they didn't concede till very late on. But it, but when it, it wasn't until most fans checked out the highlights of the game and realised that, like, I don't even think Bournemouth had a shot in the whole entire game and and had 11 men behind the ball for the entirety of the game. I can see, after the humiliation they had against us, that Eddie Howe's going to play five at the back with five central defensive midfield, five central defensive midfielders and no forwards. It'll be that defensive and frustrating resolute for new, uh, effort by Newcastle, and they'll still get beat 3 0. Man City will win this easily, I'm afraid. You know, every so often, you get a result that throws up a complete, like, you're joking, what? <laughs> and 
and you know, this could be that game when you know Man City go and the, the, they do win. Uh, uh, sorry, they do lose to Newcastle, and Newcastle kind of from somewhere get divine inspiration. I don't think this is it, though. <laughs> I've said all that, and I am going to go agree with you two guys and go for the um, Man City win. Um, again, I guess I know which way this is going for you, Steve. Last game of the weekend on Sky again, Tottenham hosting Liverpool. Yep, my hatred for Tottenham is always there, but <laughs> even even against the Liverpool team, I think Liverpool are too classy for them. Yeah. I think um, their front three will tear, tear the, the back four apart, especially, uh, what's his name, the back, um, the centre-half, the English lad, Dyer. He's, uh, yeah, yeah. Man, he's 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 worse than the one we got from Southampton, but <laughs> either the two we got from Southampton, <laughs> yeah. I just, hope, and, you know, yeah. I just hope Liverpool play him off the park because Con- you know, Conte's got a difficult job, hasn't he, Steve? I mean, even with you know he's he's gone into Tottenham now, they're going he's going to have to have an, a good January as well, isn't he? I mean, they're not going to go down, obviously, but for him to sort of achieve anything this season, he's going to have to have a good January, and uh, it is. I think I think it's probably tougher for him than he thought it was. It's purely because my hatred for Tottenham and, and, and Arsenal is that the players rule the roost. Um, mm. You know, I've seen I've seen it from the last couple of managers. And I think Tottenham will play how the players will play how they want to play. They won't yeah. play how the manager wants them to play. And I think uh, Conte, if he was going to change the way things were going to do, it'd have been massively a big change to the way they are. But they're still playing like Tottenham, and it's still yeah. the same players in the team. And I think it's a kind of like you go back to the days of England. England used to be run by by five or six of the top players. It wasn't the manager; it was the, it was the players that. You know, um, the, mm. the, the the thing, and I think that's 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 what I hate with Tottenham, because I felt sorry for the the, the Wolves guy when he went in there because you, yeah. you could see him from day one, and I think it was so disrespectful the, the, the way they treated the guy, and uh, you can you just see him there just smiling and smirking in the cars when they, when they leave training, and. It's just the attitude of them, you know, the attitude of the way they fall over, they roll around, they try and get players sent off, try and get people booked. And, oh, man, I hate them. I hate them with a vengeance. You hide it well. <laughs> Brad, how are you? So I go, I've just seen your message. Um, which way do you see this going? I, I agree. I think it's going to be a, Liz, Liz, uh, a Lisbon, a Liverpool win. Uh, yeah, it's... Look, don't get me wrong. I, I I really do admire Steve's passionate hatred towards Spurs. Like, uh, you know, I must say that. But unfortunately, they're, they're now managed by a guy who's going to get his way at that ground because he clearly has them over a barrel. I've stated that since his appointment. I don't understand uh, the appointment of Nuno. I completely agree with everything that Steve just said about it. I think it was disrespectful. I think it was disgraceful. Why hire a manager? Uh, you know, you could have easily just gone behind the scenes, you know, not had too much of a spectacle, made it out to be something that it wasn't and said, oh, no, 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 we just had a bit of a misunderstanding and, and, and rang him up the next day and gone, actually, I've really thought about it. We're happy to give you the negotiations, Mr. Conte. Uh, yeah, that you can bring in your staff. We've, we've, we've got the funds for it. It was blah, blah, blah. Please come and manage Tottenham if you're still interested in the job. He takes it. This never happens. Nuno goes to a, another team, maybe not in England, that needs a job. Maybe he takes over a job that became available. Um, obviously, he, he now, you know, he, he, he's lost this one. Uh, and it wasn't really fair. But it is Conte manager. And I did say, with all the troubles that Tottenham have had in the past, where they try and play everything around Kane because they worship the ground that he walks on, yeah, you know, he's a good player, whether you like him or not. Your opinions on whether he's world class or not is, is totally up to you. But Conte's the one that's probably gone in there and gone, if you don't want to be asked with Tottenham after the way he was in the summer, and he's probably turned around to Kane and gone, if you don't want to be the shining light at Spurs anymore, mate, that's fine by me. I've got 
a lot of other players I can build our strengths and attack around. And I actually think they're going to get a draw from this. I don't know why. I just feel Conte's got the ability about him to get a to get a draw at home against Liverpool. Oh, wow. OK, so there we go. A, a draw for you. Um, I hope not, because I, I don't want to see Tottenham in Europe again. Guys, we've done really well tonight because we've got like two squeezed down into one. And we, we're, we're about the same time that it normally takes us to do one. Has Bad been keeping his answers shorter this week? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, we've got... Well, I don't know if you're available next Monday at the same time. If you are, we're actually going to be doing three weeks next week because we've got the 26th, 28th and 1st. Because I'm yep. trying to give everybody sort of not not asking you sort of between Christmas and New Year. Yeah, I'm available, mate. No problem. That would be brilliant. Um, and uh, well, I will see you on Monday, Brad. I hope you are as well. Have a good. Uh, I know you're rushing off to a show, so enjoy yourself. Thank you both so much for coming on. I say I think we've done well in the time we've got there. Um, come on, Steve. We've got to get these points back against him, haven't we? Well, that's what I'm trying to do, the opposite of what he, do, of what he does. Um, <laughs> didn't work Didn't work Saturday, but... <laughs> no, <be>. no. <laughs> but I'm, uh, always, I'm always two down with uh, Arsenal and Tottenham, anyhow. Well... Uh, which I don't no, mind. No, I don't not, not always, maybe. They're not win winning every week, are they? But, uh, but Steve, I'll let you go, because I know you're getting late from work. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you I will see you Monday. Always a pleasure yeah. to have you on. Have Cheers, Thanks, guys. Thank you. Take Hello, care. Bye-bye. So, um, Brad, let's just get rid of that. Thank you very much, as always. I know you've got to say another show to go off, so I won't keep you um, long. Uh, enjoy it, and I will see you. Oh, I'm not sure. You're, you're going away, aren't you, on Thursday for Christmas? Yeah, because fuck Boris. I'm still going away, whatever he says. Um <laughs> I'm going away seeing the family. I'm spending it with my family. I don't give a monkeys. I ain't seen them in ages. People can swivel on their opinions on that one. Um, I'm not doing anything against just, the regular. Just say you were doing a, just say you were doing a quiz, mate. And apparently, you can you can do those. Oh yes, yes. It was a it was a, a, a staff meeting that I attended for several days. Um, <laughs> it was hugely necessary. Yeah. No, but on a on a, on a serious note, uh, I really hope. It doesn't go that way, but yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah. I'm traveling down, it's gonna be nice. So, I don't think you see me to the day after Spurs game, do you, mate? I, yeah, I don't know. Um, on um, Everton on Saturday, I can't remember what we said about the post match show there. Um, I think Everton, we were leaving it. Everton on Saturday. Um, no, I thought we was doing it, weren't we? Are what, you doing what, that? Well, if you can do it, that's brilliant, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, still, I always, I my my family know that I always make myself free for football. I, I, I get <laughs> that from my granddad. My granddad always made sure he watched his West Ham games. Um, you know my efficiency with West Ham. I'm quite yeah. fond of them. Years have been. So my family's very aware that I'm football man. So I always get freedom and a sober mind for it. So I should be fine for a post match. Um, for forever to make. Really well. Have a safe journey, mate. I will do. Thanks very much. I'm hoping I can sort this charger because it's just not holding charge on here, which is the biggest issue. So I'm hoping I can stay alive on my on, on riches. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it, mate. Good luck. I have a good do. one. And as I do have a safe journey down, mate, and I will see you hopefully talking about uh, three points on Saturday, Sunday even. Yeah. Hopefully, mate. yeah. Hopefully. yeah. Take care, mate. Thanks very much. Take have care. a good day. Have you. a good flight. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Thanks to Brad there. Uh, um, hope he can uh, sort his. Let me add myself back in. I was <laughs> I was going to clip myself out just as badly. Um, what's coming up next? I've got a day off tomorrow. I'm having some family time as it's coming up to Christmas. Don't miss me too much. And then we've got this on Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you.
Wednesday at 7, we're doing the preview show uh, for Spurs on the Thursday, and we have got Simon from Premier, Tots, uh, from Premier Hotspur TV, get my teeth in, is going to come and join us, and we're going to be having a chat with him uh, about all things Tottenham. That, of course, is if the game goes ahead, and we, uh, as Brad said earlier, I hope that the, all all the players concerned are better on both Leicester and Tottenham side. Thanks for checking with us, guys. It's been a long night. I need to go and have a poo. <sighs> Caring is sharing, guys. I will see <laughs> you Wednesday at 7. <laughs> Take care now and stay safe. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. Don't forget, catch us on the podcasts on all the major podcast stations, Sat, um, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, if you want to listen back on it, Google, uh, Podcast Addict, Anchor. And thanks for watching. Take care. See you on uh, see you on Wednesday. It's all over. It is now over.